Hello, today I'm going to show you this clock that I made over the winter break. The reason that I made this clock is because I found this vacuum fluorescent display uh, at my college. It's for a washer, washing machine. I found it in the trash and I wanted to do something cool with it, so I decided to make it into a clock. Um, so I went online, figured out how these things worked, and then I made this. So I'll show you. That's the front here in the back. I had, this is where the power goes in. Uh, I'm using this adapter that I salvaged from an old iHome. So it's 15 volts out at 2 amps, which 2 amps is enough apparently to make it work. I have a power switch there and then hour and minute buttons. So to turn this on, I'll plug it in. And then plug it in here and turn it on and now it's going to boot up and so just a quick uh, overview of how this works so it's probably kind of hard to see but there are these lines that go horizontally across the display and those are cathodes hot cathodes um, it's called the filament of the display and so those emit electrons and then you can also, it's kind of hard to see, there's these grids, uh, the vertical sections, you can kind of see, where is it? Um, you can see these like vertical lines almost over here, these outlines, uh, those are all like grid meshes. And so there are six of those across the display. And then each of these, little pieces of text uh, horizontally, those are connected, those are the anodes. So you have to, in order to light a certain part of the display, for example, if I wanted to light this available light, I had to activate the first grid, which would be this part, and then the first anode, uh, which would light up that part. But if I want to light up multiple things at the same time, I have to do something called multiplexing, uh, which I'm doing right here. So right now the clock says 718. <clears throat> so uh, to multiplex, basically, uh, I only have to have one grid on at a time. And then I just go through them extremely fast. So only one thing's on at a time. But to the human eye, it looks like it's saying 718 continuously. Um, so... To set this clock, right now it's 11.48, so I'm going to go in the back here. So 11, and then I can just hold it down if I want. I took care of all the debouncing and code. Um, it's actually 11.49. So there we go. <clears throat> I did the debouncing and code because it was a lot easier than making a little debounce circuit for each button uh, and so that makes it so essentially when you press the button it doesn't just press it'll go back and forth a bunch of times and if I didn't do debouncing for one press of the button it could do a lot more than one actual press it could do like hundreds so I fixed that in the code so uh, you can also see here I'm flashing this middle dot uh, every second so it's on for one second then off for one second and that's essentially the clock you can see in the back there's a lot of wires but that green glow is from a raspberry pi zero that i'm using to drive the whole thing so the basic circuit that i have is that in the back like here's the raspberry pi i have a perf board in the bottom and that has all my circuitry on it. And on there, coming from the 15 volts, I've connected a buck converter for 5 volts, which is powering the Raspberry Pi. And then I have another buck converter for 3.3 volts, which is doing two things. So first, I'm using that to drive the filament of the display. So 3 volts is across there. And then I also am using that for some uh, level shifters, logic level translators which there's four of those. I'll 
I'll put the chips in the description. So the 3.3 volts is used because the Raspberry Pi of the GPIO, like general purpose input output, uh, that outputs 3.3 volts. So I'm using that, that voltage so I can compare it and then shift that up to the 15 volts, which is coming in. And then that 15 volts then goes to the display. So that's essentially how this works. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks.